can we just hear from the public sector as well um, and the opportunities that um, the NHS um, and uh, the teaching uh, profession feel that um, these very high-speed uh, networks might deliver them, what the opportunities are there, but also what, you know, what, the, what the problems might be. Cathy, do you want to... Uh, Give us yes. an insight into that. I think huge opportunities for education. Um, we would always welcome something like this because it means that we have more ways of extending education out um, much further um, to, to kids who probably work for, um, are educated at home. And, yeah. and you can do lots of different things with the technology. We would always say um, it absolutely must not replace the, the, the need for a teacher, yeah. a qualified person face-to-face, -face, teaching a child, um, reading body language, understanding when a child um, is probably not getting it in the classroom, um, and being able to respond to that and, and to make um, provisions for that. Um, so it absolutely must not be a replacement, but what it can be is, is um, an enhancement to education. And what about the medical profession, uh, the NHS, etc.? I mean, what can, what can the <laughs> NHS do with, uh, with, uh, with, these, with this kind of... Uh speed of technology? Well, I think the thing to uh, recognise is this, we're probably talking here about things which is engaging the public with, uh, with the health service, so uh, perhaps uh, uh, telehealth, uh, so looking after patients in their own, in their own premises mm -hmm. and being able to hook up uh, devices which monitor their health and report back to central locations. Uh, not necessarily at the moment requirement for super fast connections there, but I suspect what will happen is as the capability of bandwidth becomes available, then a, a more rich set of uh, capabilities will be developed to, to plug into that. So it's questionable what will come first, the bandwidth or the, or the applications that require it. And I think one will serve as the other, and it will be a, a virtuous circle upwards, a virtuous spiral. Um, other areas, I think, if we look at uh, 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 GP surgeries, for example, um, uh, very questionable is whether ADSL is the right connection uh, type for, for those surgeries, because we've already talked about the uh, uh, the nature of the connection, the, the asynchronous nature. So I think there's a, a need to recognise where the balance is, where the trade-off comes between ADSL to give uh, connectivity to the masses, if you like, and then at what point it becomes more of a business offering that you need to look at alternative uh, complementary uh, yep. technologies. But you need very high bandwidth and you need very low latency to make those sort of things work. But once you make it work, you reduce the amount of travelling that's necessary, it becomes a significant contribution to meeting the 2050 uh, carbon reduction targets. We've got a lot of initiatives going on to meet carbon reduction, to introduce things like um, smart grids and smart metering, all of which require a, a proper investment in communications bandwidth. And to do it piecemeal is, is somehow missing a trick. These things have come together at a moment in time that gives us the opportunity to really exploit the technology that's available to meet a very wide range of, of national objectives. Yeah. And if we don't face up to it and see it holistically and make the appropriate investment but simply leave it to the market, then we'll get left behind as a country and we won't manage to meet the major targets that we're setting strategically in the UK at all.